Hi, I'm Carl and thanks for checking out my video to my electric bike project that I'm naming Turtle. I live about 15 miles from the nearest town where the post office, gas station, and civilized people live. In April, I sold my truck, leaving a broken down motorcycle and a couple of bicycles. What you're about to see is my attempt at building an off-grid DIY survival quadricycle, a pedal-powered microcar with electric solar assist. I did a little research, but my way is most likely not the best way to do this. Once a week, I ride a bicycle into town to check mail and packages. I like bike riding, so I'm kind of looking forward to trying this out. That's the plan, anyway. Stay tuned and be sure to subscribe if you're interested. Holy crap! <laughs> All right, cool. So it's uh, the ninth today, maybe? I'm not really sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even sure what day it is. Friday, I think. Yeah, I think it's the ninth. October, yeah. I was looking back and I think it was five week, or five months ago I got the motor for this thing. So yeah, we're getting, honestly, I had no idea it would take this long. But I guess what I could say is in the beginning, like for instance, okay, uh, one of the neighbors uh, and Patreons, David, was giving me rides into town while he was here. And then in between that, I had the blue bike and then built the trailer and was able to use that and realized that I wasn't as desperate, I guess, as I thought I would be to get this thing rolling. That took a little bit of pressure off and then that kind of gave me time to back up a little bit and really think it through to refine the design a little bit. Also, quite honestly, there was a lot of things in my mind that I wasn't sure how I was going to make them work. Okay, That's pretty much the simplest way I could say that. Um, I would look at it and I'm like, all right, so, you know, I, I figured this is about the format I wanted. I wanted four wheels. I wanted the electric motor somewhere in the back, the front wheel steer, probably little wheels in front, bigger wheels in the back. But that was about as far as I got, right? I didn't really think, okay, how exactly am I going to build the frame, for instance? How exactly am I going to make pedaling and electric motor work together? with the parts that I have. I didn't fully understand what I had available as far as, well, you know, what, how am I going to make those freewheel cassette ratchets work with an axle? Because they're not supposed to, they're not made for that. That kind of a thing. So it's been an enormous learning curve of trying to figure this out and just like, okay, how do you get from here to there? You know, in the broad sense, yeah, you could. I've got that sketch on the whiteboard of you know wheels and frame, but my the frame on that is a straight line. It doesn't have any detail to it at all. So yeah. So for today, um, I had three things on the board, and I think they're going to kind of work together. This seat gives me a starting point to know. I like the basic seating position. I like the basic angle. It's actually not quite what I had sketched. And when I move the seat a little bit, it also worked. So what I'm realizing is adjustability in the seat would be a really good idea. You know, even if it's just me, uh, I remember like driving the truck or some of my cars, especially if you're gonna be in the seat for seven or eight hours on a long day where you're really going somewhere. Maybe you'd wanna lean, lean forward a little bit or lean back a little bit or you know that kind of, or even slide the seat a little bit you might find that you know what was perfect when you were sitting in the shop didn't really work so good when you got out in the real world you know so you, you want to leave a little bit of adjustability also a lot of the quads that I see have a fabric seat it almost looks like a lawn chair you know that kind of a thing and 
I don't really have anything to make that out of right now, although I do have a sewing machine, so if I went that way, I probably could do it. Obviously, it's not going to be OSB, as, a, as attractive as that is. Um, I'm probably going to weld up some metal framework and then either put um, pipes across that I could put pipe insulation on and then leave the rest open. So you, it would be, you know, because you're going to be sweating, you know, in the heat of the day. So the more airflow, the better, right? The other option is just to do a metal seat with a piece of sheet metal across it and then lay something like a padded cushion on top of that, right? That you could, you know, because like you could go, for instance, go buy um, lawn chair padded cushions and then just put that on top, right? And then when you're not riding to take it off so that it doesn't get damaged by the sun, that's a very good possibility, actually. So something like that probably is what's going to happen. Um, for adjustability on the back of the seat, if I put a bolt across at the bottom and then have a prop on the back that can move to two or three different positions so that I can move it a little bit, it's not going to be, you're not going to be able to adjust it while you're, you're riding. But if you pulled over, get off, move it down one notch, ride a little bit, see if you like that better, that kind of thing, I think that would be fine. And in fact, the bikes that I'm seeing commercially made like this, that's what they're doing. Basically, they have a series of quick disconnects that they can undo something pretty easy, move it, put it back on. So that's probably what's going to happen. It'll have a, a good pivot on the bottom. And on the bottom, the bottom of the seat, right now I've got a 2x2 two two under the front edge to give it a little tilt back, and that seems to work. Okay, so I'm going to work through that today. From the top of this piece down to just before the curve is about long enough for the seat back. So I think that's pretty much what we're going to use. This was one idea. I'm not totally committed to it, but it's kind of a thing, well, I need to try something. And I've got all these already cut, right? So I've got the best ones. So the reason I'm going this way first, if I put pipe insulation across here, you'd have a nice little bit of padding, and this would be completely open so the air would flow through it, okay? That's a start. And then just do a little weld on each one. If I decide I don't like it, it's easy enough to come in with the grinder and just cut them off and then grind it smooth again. So I think I will probably do that for the first test. I have some pipe insulation. I also have a few of the, you know, your Mexican horse blankets would be perfect on here. Just lay that across, put a clamp or a hose, um, uh, like a clothespin or something to hold it in place on so it doesn't fall off, right? So if you had a horse blanket going across this and you're, I mean, you're not, you're leaning back on it, but most of your weight is down on your butt still. You know, it's not going to be like a car seat. Okay. Okay, this isn't maybe the most unusual idea, but it seems like it'll work. Um, I want my seat to be about the same width as the frame of the bike. So I thought, well, if I want it to be about that size, why not just use that as a reference? So first, should have done some cleanup on this, I guess. I'm gonna need to grind all that clean. But if there's one thing I'm learning about this from myself and watching other people, don't get too wrapped up on, oh, I have to do it again or something. You know, you'll you clamp it once, then you mark where you want to do all the cleanup, and then you'll take it apart, do the cleanup, put it back, check it, tweak it a little bit. So don't think you're just going to throw it down and do it once. That's probably the biggest lesson I've learned for myself, I guess. Yeah, you watch one of those, you know, YouTube guys or something like that, and you see all the welding. You don't usually see cutting and grinding too much, right? And there's a lot you don't see. So if, you're, if your project seems like it's going really slow, don't feel too bad, you know? It's, I mean, in a professional setup, a welder would have an assistant. Yeah. 
<laughs> Think about that, right? Okay, so I'm going to say top and top. is arbitrary um, and I did the same basic thing on the bike trailer I just have a straight piece that goes between these and I'll, I'll clean these up a little bit so that they line up straight and that'll be it this will come above my shoulders but not quite up to my head I've seen some bikes with headrests and some without I'm gonna leave that as an option for later um, you're leaning back pretty far, but you're also looking forward, you know, so you're not just laying down in a recliner most of the time. Although I could see maybe this might be a thing where you finally get up the hill, set your parking brake and kind of relax a little bit. So in that respect, this is going to be really cool. Um, I find myself when I'm biking home. Even though I'm fairly comfortable on the bike now, my butt is getting used to it. It's not bothering me too much just being in the saddle. There are some times where I just want to get off and stand on my own feet instead of on the pedals, right? But this is going to be like, well, you're in an easy chair the whole time. So that seems okay. Anyway, so make a mark. This will fit into here. I usually eyeball it just to make sure I'm in the right frame. It's like, am I completely wrong or something? That's about right. So I'm gonna go get my speed square. Because if these are clamped to the, the side of the frame, they're pretty much as straight as anything else on the bike. And so I just wanna make sure that this line is straight so that when I cut this one straight, it'll just fit right in. And then I know I'm gonna to want to clean up this edge so that I can weld these two together. Uh, I'm taking advantage of this curve on the top just because it looks nicer. On the bottom, I want my pivot pretty close to here, so I'm just going to do a straight piece straight across. So that is, I think, about 18 inches or 16 inches. Oh, that's right. The shelf I was using was 18 inches. That's where that came from. Okay. So. Just a touch over 16, so I'm going to cut it at 16 and just a little bit, basically. This is the same piece I used on the rear axle. I also used a shorter version of this on the front axle, so why not do the same thing? So we can put at least part of this, or maybe the whole thing, maybe I'll just cut this edge off, set this on top of, ignore the seat here, but set that on top of the frame, and then... Um, I'll have holes drilled like here, and the seat can move all the way down that. And that's this is a little bit stronger, so it's a good place to use it. Okay, I'm gonna turn on some tunes. Maybe we'll show a little bit of work in progress, but if you, uh, if you ever do a project like this, doing video and narrating as you go means it'll take you four times longer. So I'm gonna get into working mode now. Stay tuned. All right, music playing, but in the meantime. Thanks, these are awesome. Houston Firefox. <laughs> Got some new gloves for grinding because I kept burning holes in the other ones. You know, it's a weird thing. You get something like new gloves and then you don't want to use them because you don't want to get them dirty. You know? Or it's like, oh, I don't want to burn holes in these. These are nice. purposes so you don't burn holes in your hands I guess. Alright. Chop chop. I would love to do the dry cut saw with this because I've got it, but you can't get this kind of awkward thing in there. It's just you know. Sometimes I'll do a rough cut and then take it over there and clean it up. So that might happen. I got another cut over there set up and ready to go. So as soon as I get this done, I'll go start the generator. And that's the other thing, I can't run the saw off of the solar. It just pulls too much power right now. All right, here we go. So I got uh, two grinders, 
one, the switch doesn't work, and one, the head isn't wearing out, so I don't want to use the worn out one for cutting. You need a little more precision. So, we'll jump start this, I guess. This one is actually fine for grinding, so we'll just put the grinding wheel back on it because you put pressure on it and then it takes the slack out. I mean, it's not ideal, but, you know, it's... For now, it'll be fine. What I'll do... Yeah, Houston Firefox came up for a visit while he was here. We did a couple runs into town and stocked up on stuff. So, I had mentioned I needed a grinder. Let's go ahead and just open that guy up. So, no official sponsorship except for the fact that somebody bought it for me. That doesn't count, does it? I'm not sponsored by Porter. There we go. Yeah, so we stopped off at uh, the farmer or the, the tractor supply place. And while we were there, we picked up the gloves and I was like, hey, let's check out the grinders. Oh good, it's got the same size as tool I think. Wonderful. Nothing more annoying than grabbing a grinder and then needing to remember which tool fits it. Yeah, that's just one of those weird things. Okay. Obviously, oh, they even give you a wheel. Sweet. Bonus. That's so much special. Awesome. Alright. Awesome. Okay. I usually don't use the handle and I usually don't use the guard because it's always in the way. But I am getting a lot of burns on my gloves when I don't use the guard. Maybe we'll try. See if I could do the guard for the cutter and not for the grinder. It might, it'll probably come off again, but let's use the wrong tool and see if it fits. If it does. I'm not pro. Let's see, what's the word? I'm not pro safety Nazi or anti safety Nazi, I guess. Like, I always wear gloves when you're using power tools, and a lot of people say you're not supposed to. Typically, I do take the guards off of things like grinders because they're always in the way. But they do have their place, so... And this one is, looks like it's an easy one to adjust. That helps a lot. So, do that. So, it tilts it up there. Yeah, that might be okay. Between the guard and the, the, the latch for the guard, when you're cutting, you start off cutting down, then you want to shift to the edge because your wheel is never big enough. And this has got a little bit of wear on the wheel already. Yeah, we'll play it, play it by ear. I normally don't use the handle though. Man, this is a good day. New grinder and new gloves. Yeah, the whole idea to me you go back and forth between cutting and grinding and wire wheeling and you know so if you can afford it get as many of the little grinders as you can you know three or four is actually not excessive when you start you i mean if you do this a lot it makes a lot of sense because the time you i mean because you, you do one cut and then you clean it up and then you do another cut and you clean it up that's kind of it you know if you could get yourself set up where you did a bunch of cuts and then switched wheels and they did, did a bunch of grinding, that probably would be okay. But anyway, yeah, this is. They're ready for action now. Let's see how this works. That feels really nice. I buy so many cheap tools, and honestly, this was not an ex exceptionally expensive grinder. Um, but it, it feels like it's got balance, it doesn't vibrate. That's kind of cool. Yay! All right, let's get to work.
forgot which side was clamped. Ah, gonna get me. Gotta say, I like it, but, right, always but. You get so used to not using a guard. Yeah, the, the, the clamp on the guard really is gonna cut into how deep of a cut I can make with this wheel. Of course, I usually do cut way too deep probably, so. I guess you're supposed to throw those things away when they get small. I don't. Probably will take the guard off, but I do like the fact that it didn't burn any holes in my gloves yet. <laughs> That's a big perk. <laughs> okay, next thing we're gonna do is start the generator and then we're gonna make the cut on the dry saw. Quite honestly, I don't always have a lot of money and when I do, I spend it on tools. But when that happens, I never regret it, honestly. Piece. Where's my four inch piece that I just cut? This one? Maybe? Not that one. That's the one. Yeah. Oops. Starting at the back this time, this is actually, I realized upside down, because I've got a better surface on here than the back side, I was building it um, with the best surface towards me, but it's flipped around. So where it does say left now, I'm going to change that to right and vice versa. Yeah, I think I'll do that now so I don't get confused. And right, left, 
that way it'll be flipped around because this is top and I want this to be the side I see facing. Okay, so this is going to be the bottom edge. It's a U-channel that's on edge and it fits in between here. That's the same way that I did it on the bike trailer and that worked out pretty good. Uh, up here, I like my spacing. I'm going to do a little bit of a cleanup on this edge just so that I can close up the gap a little bit, but basically our size is good. So, since I've got these pieces laid out the way I want them, I'm gonna take it apart one piece at a time, do all the cleanup work, get all the rust off, and any grinding that needs to be done, and then put that piece back and grab the next piece and keep them all laid out this way. When I get everything the way I want it, clamp it to the frame and use that as my reference surface it's the best I got uh, it's not perfect but it's not bad so do the tacks there and then unclamp it probably work on the wooden workbench again and then do my finish welding there so we can do one piece at a time and we'll do some cleanup I'm gonna grab my headphones we're gonna rock out the razzle dazzle pixie dust or those magical things All right, next in the uh, continuing calamity here. I made a mark here for where I want the seat to be. So I think in this area is where I'm gonna put the bracket. And I'm gonna to wanna to probably outset it just a little bit because this'll get you. I made the seat back the same width as the frame. So if I moved the bracket to be flush where I would think I would probably normally want to put it it won't work it'll be an interference fit you never get it on so I'll have to set it out a little bit and then we'll weld this piece to here I'm gonna weld it on the front and the back and not anywhere else so if I need to I can cut it off and move it if I end up just what I want is like a comfortable spot in about the middle hole so that I could push it back or forward if I needed to okay so let's just kind of think about it like that yeah depending on how we look this piece isn't very straight Huh. It's more straight if you look at this side, so there's 
definitely some some shady work here. I will probably have a washer to space this. I wanted to leave some slack. So that's good. All right. For now, I'm not going to put any spacers in. I'm just going to get it kind of roughed up. in between that'll be about right good with adjustments even this is a uncommon thing you never know quite what you're going to find around here black bumblebee that is just huge for scale sharpie pin it's got to be an inch long and I've never seen one like that before of all the things right Every time I pick something up, I try to do it gently, just in case. <laughs> wow! It's like you can see the fuzz on them, like, you know, bees have fuzz. This one has got, like, sh I don't know what shag, but velour or something. There he goes. Wow, let's just 
just hanging out in the shade. This was stacked up with all the other ones. That's just crazy. Okay, back to work. Oh, that was going so well. Try that again. All right. Oops. Crash. Yeah. Okay, it's windy, so I'm not gonna say too much here. Up a watch on from yesterday. I'm like, oh, I got a watch on. How did that happen? Uh, about 4:30 in the afternoon on I think the 9th October. Yeah, the wind is gonna blow pretty good. So sorry. But as it sits now, I've got basic steering. I've got a rough seat. No brakes yet. But if I can get brakes cobbled together, just anything stick on the ground kind of thing, I guess. Uh, and we can start testing. But this is actually really comfortable. More or less. I think it's too far back, but I think I might get used to it. Right? We're getting closer. It's, it's one of those things where you, you kind of think about it for so long, and then all of a sudden when you sit on it, you're like, hey, this is kind of, kind of good. Get this off so we can see. How about there? Okay, the hoop of the seat is done, the framework. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to show up as well as I thought it was. Let's try that. Yeah, that'll work. So the, the hoop of the seat is done. I'm going to do some cross pieces, I think, but I might just put the, uh, the plywood on for now and just go with that. These guys are all loose, but I got this 16 inches long and I got about four inches sticking out the bottom, so I can push this up quite a ways. I didn't know the guys were loose yet. So what I'm probably going to do is take it in on the drill press and then shoot the holes tomorrow. I got four and a half adjustment here. I've got number three and I got three more. So I can move a four and aft. So four and aft and then up and down. Um, and I'm not really sure what I want to do about the seat bottom yet. I might set it up in that I could attach it to the same bolt holes down here. So when I move the seat back, the seat back, back, I could also attach the bottom to the next hole or something like that. You know, something like that. It right where it sits now, it feels like I'm too far back to reach the handlebars comfortably, but that could be a cushion could make up the difference. So I think we're pretty close there. Yeah. I don't know, it seemed like a lot of work for today for that. But I didn't start until probably ten o'clock too, so so it just it just takes a while, but the parts that I built I think are um, definitely good enough to, to run with. That's one of the important things. So I'm trying to get better parts now, and then some of these could carry over to the next version, kind of thing. I think the weakest part is the drive axle, and the steering pivots would be easiest to improve. So yeah. Alright, let's go pick up our tools. But yeah, this is getting fun. That's the plan anyway. Stay tuned and be sure to subscribe if you're interested. Holy crap. <laughs>